every time I make a video like this, I feel like I need to go underground and hide because of the comments. Because many famous dog trainers on YouTube have thousands and thousands of subscribers and I don't. That doesn't mean that they're right and I'm wrong. Well, I know I'm right. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm Dr. Ryan, a veterinarian and a veterinary behavior residency graduate. Let's check it out. You guys, this dog hasn't been able to be around other people in over three years. Understandable. I mean, a dog like that seems very, very fearful and very, very anxious and probably doesn't want to be around people. The, the same old story, you know, positive only, three different trainers, no results. The same old story? I wonder what book he's reading, because the book that I read was just the opposite. Of course, the fact that you're working with a reward-based training or with a positive trainer doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get the results that you're aiming for. There are also a lot of bad force-free trainers. Also, if you weren't fully committed with doing what a good trainer told you to do and you just didn't do it because you didn't believe in it, then I'm not surprised it didn't work. But positive reward-based training definitely works for this type of dogs. The other trainers that you had worked with, had they been able to work with him? No one has ever been able to hold the leash. First, it seems like the owner is able to hold the leash. Why should a trainer be able to hold the leash? Why should anyone be able to hold my own dog's leash? I am my dog's caretaker. I'm supposed to hold their leash. And of course, if the dog is aggressive, why even try holding the leash? It's dangerous and it only stresses the dog out even more. So maybe those positive trainers actually tried avoiding making your dog more stressed. This is serious. This dog has a bite history. Normally I'd like to see the dog owner work a little bit so I can figure out the mistakes that they're making to help them. But because of the dangers this dog presents, I have to take the leash immediately to get to work. To me, it sounds like you're supposed to do just the opposite. You definitely want to know why the owner is not able to deal with the dog. Let's say that you're a great dog trainer. Awesome. You can do with the dog whatever you want the dog to do. But then the owner is the one that needs to take the dog home, right? So what did you do by taking the dog away from him right away? Learn what the issues are and then treat them. So I'm going to start working with him. I want you to ignore him, okay? So he, he's basically like, okay, you're going to save me now, dad, right? And again, me taking that away from him and off the table is gonna allow him to think clearly and, and be, you know, gain confidence that he can work with other people. So you could see that the dog is anxious, right? He was trying to get away from the trainer. He was trying to get back to his owner where he feels more secure. But the trainer thinks that that's actually a bad thing and he needs to stop it to make the dog feel more secure. That doesn't make any sense. And then correction. Now use your body, take your left leg and walk towards the coffee here. Now come right back. Good. Come. And then stop. We're not trying to take away his ability to show emotion. We're just letting him know when it's appropriate to show that emotion. Which is exactly like taking away his ability to show emotions. The dog is signaling us that he's afraid. Why would you want to take away this showing of intent, this showing of emotion? It's like, I'm afraid. Please stay away from me. And what they do is correct, meaning they're punishing the dog for doing that. What do you think is gonna happen next? The dog might not show this emotion anymore and he will bite without giving us a warning. Now, if you guys know anything about dog body language, you understand and see that this dog is stressed, but also understand that this dog was stressed three years ago and a year ago and before he came in on the way here and as he's here, he is going to be stressed. And my goal is to simply break this dog out of his shell by group class. And I just wanna be clear that yes, he's stressed, but it's part of the process for him. Yes, he's stressed. Let's break him out of the shell. This really blows my mind. He understands that the dog is behaving this way because he's afraid. So instead of making him feel more comfortable, he's making him feel even worse. Did you see and hear that? That's just an air snap. So he's just like, get out of here. That type of communication is like absolutely brilliant to see because he's being so clear. Yes, he is being so clear. 
Thank you. I couldn't have said it better, but how should we deal with it? We have to get to the problem. And the problem with Moki is he's insecure. Yes. Why is he insecure? Because he doesn't have enough guidance and leadership no. at home. No, no, no. That's not the reason the dog is insecure. Guidance or someone else's control doesn't make you feel less insecure. Many times it's gonna cause just the opposite. A dog can be so fearful because of nature or nurture. Nature, meaning that genetically this dog has a defective brain chemistry and that makes him stressful, kind of like with people. Also, experiences, that's the nurture part. Maybe he didn't have the proper exposure when he was a puppy. Maybe something bad happened to him around people. So you need to fix those things. You can't just slap obedience on everything and expect miracles. No bad dog. Yes, we agree. No bad dogs. Bad trainers. Bad veterinarians. Bad caretakers. Sit. Good, good. Leave it. Correct. There you go. Leave it. Yes, Good. he's afraid. He's trying to, to hide. Back down. All right, you guys, punishing. I want to break this down a little bit for you to see exactly where Andy went wrong to hopefully help you out at home. So over here, the dog starts to growl. Andy is hunched over the dog, and he's really hollering at the dog very emotionally. What you want to do is stand up straight, have confidence and assertiveness, have that clarity, dog, leave it, correction. But we don't want to hunch over and try to overpower the dog physically and uh, verbally. So hopefully this helps you guys in the future. I know it helps Andy. Yes. Hunching over is very bad for your back. But it wasn't the fact that he was hunching over. It's the fact that he was punishing the dog for showing the dog is stressed. Now let's say that we're fine with punishment. The timing is so, so important. If you give the punishment or the correction, or whatever you want to call it, two, three seconds after the dog did the behavior, the dog is not going to understand the connection. So he didn't even do that right. Oftentimes people will say that correcting a dog when they react towards something will make the dog not like the person. Yes. Right. And you're, you're actually not correcting the dog for anything other than acting inappropriately. Correct. The dog is acting appropriately. He's not acting inappropriately. He's acting appropriately. The dog is showing us everything that we need to know. It is us that are insisting on having the dog in situations that stress him out. Instead, what we should do in situations like this is to find a distance where the dog is not reacting and is not triggered that much that he goes berserk when seeing the trigger, in this case, a stranger. If the dog is not reacting that way, then give him a treat. By doing that, we're actually creating a counter conditioning. We're changing what the dog is thinking or feeling in that situation. So instead of, oh my God, this person is a monster, now he's thinking, oh, oh my God, every time this person comes here, I'm gonna be rewarded. Awesome, I want this person to keep coming here. If the dog is muzzle trained and doesn't care wearing the muzzle, it's fine for protection to use it. But that doesn't mean that now you're gonna get too close to the person and cross the dog's threshold. And by the way, sometimes, like people, just training is not enough. Sometimes you actually need to give the dog something to reduce the anxiety. Basically, medications like Prozac even. That's not gonna drug your dog. That's not gonna cause your dog to be a zombie. It will make your dog calmer if he needs it and if that's the right medication for him. Of course, you should probably speak with your veterinarian or even with a veterinary behavior specialist before making a decision like that. Now, if you agree with me or even disagree with me about what I just said, check out this video about another famous dog trainer.